Welcome to the channel. I'm 31 now in 2014. When I was 22 and attending uni, I got a phone call from my mother that turned my life upside down. I remember I didn't even answer at first because I was gaming with friends, but she called again immediately after the first call. This was an unwritten rule in the family. If you call twice like that, it's important. Like someone died important. So when she called again, I excused myself and answered, only to hear chaos in the other end. Like people were arguing. But when my mom realized I had answered, it sounded like she went to another room and closed the door. I just asked what was going on and I heard she was crying. My memory of this conversation is a bit blurry, but she basically asked me if I had something to confess to regarding E. E is my cousin on my mom's side and is seven years younger than me, 15 at the time. At that point I hadn't even seen E for several years. I just said no and asked what this is about. She just cried even harder and started accusing me of essaying E back when we were children. That E had told everything to my sister and that my sister told my mother and my aunt. He had told them that back when she was nine and I 16, she'd been playing in my room when I came in and started feeling her under her clothes and kissing her. My mother screamed at me to say something, but I couldn't even speak. It was all so absurd. I remember thinking that must be some bad joke. The last thing I remember saying was that it's not true and that E is lying. But then my mom goes on saying that how E gave such a detailed description of where and how then she kept asking something like, did you do this? Did you do this? And I just screamed back at her no. Each time. It all ended with my mom putting me on speaker and both my mom and dad saying that they don't want anything to do with me and never to contact them again. Two of my sisters texted me later that day, pretty much saying that I'm disgusting and then blocked me. I know it's weird, but after that call I went to have a long shower. To this day I still don't know why I did that. After calming down, I started calling and texting everyone, even E. No one answered and the ones who hadn't blocked my number by then quickly did so. The only thing I heard back was from my father who texted me to stop contacting them and that they need to heal. That was nine years ago and I haven't spoken to anyone in my family since. Family since that day to say this fucked me up is an understatement. I was living in a haze for weeks after that and hardly ate at all. It didn't help that this was right before I was supposed to defend my bachelor's thesis and was already stressed out. Luckily, my co-writer said something was up and saved me by controlling the conversation so that I got the easy parts. Without him, I sure I would have failed. Needless to say, no one came to my graduation, then started the worst period of my life. I spent the first year expecting the cops to knock on my door and arresting me for sexual abuse. I didn't land any jobs just living off my saved money. I drank a lot in Doxy. I also grew resentful and violent. The only reason I didn't hurt anyone is because no one was around. My neighbor called the cops on me once after I had smashed a glass, but I managed to convince the officers that I had just dropped it, and they went away since there were no others inside my apartment. Instead of sleeping, I spent my nights planning how I could hurt E and make sure no one ever found out, even thinking how I could actually do the things she'd accused me of, but much worse. I know, I'm not proud of that. I landed 2015. Only then did things start to improve. I focused all my time on my job, as it gave me something normal to do. Recovery was a slow process, but I drank less and smiled more. I lived cheap and earned good money, so I made a point of buying myself a nice gift for my birthdays, a VR headset, a motorcycle, Lego, etc. And last year I moved from my shitty apartment and bought a small house. It was an old dream of mine to have my own garage and a garden to care for. This has boosted me even more. So my life is okay now. I still got problems. I've been on antidepressants for the last few years and while they help, it's not in a happy way. They simply remove the dark thoughts and replace them with dead ones. My trust in other people is close to non-existent. I've tried dating, but only been on two dates with two different women. It's really hard to speak like a normal person when it comes down to it. And what would I tell a potential partner when she asked about my family? Oh, you know, they accused me of a heinous crime and we're not talking anymore. But I didn't do it, I swear. My field is very male dominated, so the only woman I speak to is my therapist, who I like a lot. A few days ago, I received a text from my mother. It felt unreal and I was scared to open it at first. So I just stared at the notification for hours before opening it. Yesterday, a second text followed. Translated, they basically said, Hi, my name. It's been so long since we talked. We miss you and want to know how you're doing. Here she writes a long text about my sisters and how my nieces and nephews are getting big. 
I didn't even know I was an uncle. Know that we love you and always will. Love, mom and dad. The second text said, Hi, my name. We understand if you don't want to talk to us after what happened, but please listen. Last month, the subject of you was brought up at a family gathering. During this, E was downplaying everything that had happened to her. It got so awkward that she finally admitted that nothing happened and that she probably just dreamt it. We were all appalled by this. When we last spoke, we wanted to protect E and did the only thing we thought we could do. We know that's not excusing how you were treated. What E did was wrong and we're all angry at her. We have called everyone that knew and told them the truth. We all want to speak with you and your sisters want you to meet their families. We please write back if you can find it in you to forgive us. Love, mom and dad. So yeah, that's my situation right now. I haven't answered, but they no doubt know I've seen it. Truth be told, I'm seething. So many old shitty memories are now stirring again. I don't want to forgive them and I wouldn't trust myself to be in the same room as them right now. Part of me wants to call my family and unleash everything on them, to guilt them with everything I went through until they all hit their rock bottom. Then dedicate my life to make my cousin's life as miserable as possible. The other part wants to ignore them and continue with my okayish life with my motorcycle and my garden to keep me company. I don't have any friends. The only people I speak to are my co-workers, but we're not really close. I've called my therapist clinic, but they told me she's on vacation and won't be available for weeks and I don't want anyone else than her. So that leaves internet strangers. So please, where to go from here? Do I ignore them and continue as is? Or do I answer? And if so, what to even write? I'm pretty sure meeting them in person would be a bad idea for a foreseeable future, but I'm not even sure how my life can improve from picking up those old threads. As embarrassing as it may sound, I've dreamed about the day when they apologize to be them throwing themselves to the ground and kissing my feet, Texting seems so anticlimactic now. Cousin falsely accused me of sap. Now my family is contacting me after almost 10 years part two. So it's been around three months since I last posted the previous post and a decent amount has happened. Some for the better and some for the worse. For one, E is still a huge judge hold. Around a week after my family sent me the messages, she also reached out with a huge apology text. When I received it, I couldn't believe my eyes. She was talking about how she had mental problems and has been dealing with them for ages, almost as an excuse as to why she did this to me. She said she needed help and her parents were helping her get it. This seemed like BS to me because all my life I knew E. She was a beaming, radiant girl until that dreadful day in 2014. The whole text felt like she was just feeding me excuses to why it happened and then ending it off with the shortest actual apology. My original plan was to go on with my life and try to slowly make it better and better. But seeing this pushed me to my limit. I had to respond and tear into her with the most vile words I could think of. In the end, the actual text I ended up sending said, you think your mental problems are bad? Try being torn away and excommunicated from your whole family for 10 years when you were just in the infant years of your adult life and see how bad those mental problems become. I am still trying to deal with all of this and the last thing I need is the culprit of my misery feeding me excuses as to why it happened. My other relatives may have been in the dark the whole time, but you? You knew the entire time and it never dawned on you to say things sooner? You're lucky I did not ally myself at this point. My parents and sibling might be another story, but I will never be able to forgive you for the irreversible damage you have done to me and my relationships. Please rot in hell and never contact me again. She hasn't responded, but I can see that she got the message because of read receipts. Maybe she took the hint to not respond. The good news is that I also responded to my parents. Nothing crazy in text because we really got the whole conversation out over the phone. It felt weird hearing their voices again. I used to relate those voices to being safe and home, but after what happened it was a whole new feeling. At first, I hated it. All the sour memories popped back into my brain from that day I last spoke to them. Those voices had been screaming at me for things I didn't even do. The conversation lasted about 3-4 hours, and while it was hard for me and most likely them, it was the most productive conversation I've ever had with them. I thought it would be a lot of excuses just like E, but to my surprise, they not only apologized a million times over, but told me everything they were in the wrong about. They said it was weighing on them all these years, and now that the truth is out, they don't know how they can live with themselves. The one really hard part was when I asked them why they didn't hear me out or believe their own son compared to a niece. They told me they struggled with it immensely, but he had made it so believable that they felt they had no choice. 
I told them that instead of just cutting contact, they should have at least tried to get me help, but they gave me nothing to work with. They said they knew this and that was the hardest part. After the first year or two, they said they wanted to contact me and try to figure things out, but they ultimately decided that me being who I was would not talk to them and things would just get worse. That got me heated a little bit because who cares what type of person I am? What I really am is your son and that comes first. At the end we came to the conclusion that we will stay in contact. I am not going over to visit them or anything but it's a start. While there is still so much hatred in my heart for them, I feel like things can get better and that's why I'm somewhat happy. Since that phone call, we frequently check up on each other and conversations are slowly getting back to what they used to be. Maybe I'll visit them someday, but I don't know when that will be or how it will go. How am I supposed to hug and say hi to the people who threw me out of their life? Cousin falsely accused me of S. 8. Now my family is contacting me after almost 10 years. Final part. Hey guys, so I have another update on my whole situation regarding E and the saw it has been another 4 or 5 months since the last update and I have some better news than worse this time again. To start off, a lot of people were telling me to sue or take E to court. While I agree that what she did was unforgivable and heinous, I don't feel like that will cause any good. The situation has been 10 years in the making and I kinda just wanna be all over and done with it. Taking her to court would cost me thousands in legal fees that I just can't afford. And I also can't help but think of the fact that he never took it to court either. I know that's not a good excuse, but it's just a thought. I am still in contact with my parents and you won't believe it, but I actually visited them around a week ago. They also have removed contact with E. And I feel like her getting the same treatment I went through is similar to being sued in terms of punishment. Believe me, I would know. Visiting the parents went well. I haven't seen the rest of my family as I want the process to be gradual. But we met and had a nice dinner, of course. In my last post, I said I didn't know how the greeting process would go. How was I supposed to greet the people who tore my normal life away? Well, the greeting went better than I imagined. I thought hate would win over me, but I actually felt somewhat relieved when I saw them. Is that weird? Maybe it was the fact that seeing them meant maybe my life was getting back to the normal it was before, but I don't know. I didn't hug them until after because the conversation we had was pretty grueling. I didn't mean to rip into them, but I felt I had to, to really get the point across of how much hurt they had caused me. At some point my mother cried because of the detail I went into about my darkest times. They said they know they can't do anything to fix what has happened, but want the future to be optimistic. They even opened the idea of coming home for Christmas and seeing the rest of the family. But I told them my plan about taking it slow and said I might be open to the idea. While I am still conflicted, that feeling of hatred is slowly going away and I am overall just feeling like a better person in general. I think the weight of the situation had pulled me down all those 10 years and now that I am free of judgment it feels good. I have also started dating now and met a great girl that I am starting to slowly get serious with. Life is getting better. Who knows what will happen in the next 10 years after this, but for the first time in ages I feel like things are going up. For all those reading, please use my story as an aid to your personal problems and grudges. Things do get better, even if you have to wait 10 years. Thank you for watching the video. Take care everyone.